Hey guys, uh, this is my first screencast for the week. Um, a little bit behind schedule considering it's Wednesday, um, but it's been a busy week. Either way, no excuses. Uh, wanted to build a quick app for my app a day challenge. It's turning out to be more of an app uh, every other day or so, but uh, neither here nor there, we'll get there. So uh, this one is going to be called My IP. And basically all it is, is you're gonna click on it and it's gonna show you what your IP address is. So um, right now I actually, I took some stuff out of the controller so we're getting an error. But I already got my server up and running so actually let's just dive right into the code. Um, I already have the resources in our routes configured. Um, and I already have a link, obviously, to um, that URL. Uh, but I guess a good place to start would be on our controller then, um, because that's why we're getting this error. So um, we actually, because we have this namespace, we have to um, make sure we have apps in front of it. And then IP controller is going to be the name of our controller. And app, it's going to inherit from application controller. Um, so yeah, this is where we're gonna start here. Um, and the reason I'm starting here, normally this is stuff that I um, already have completed before I even start the screencast. Um, but in this case, because we're actually gonna be talking a little bit more about some backend stuff, um, this is why I kinda wanted to start here. So we're gonna have this index action and it's obviously gonna point to um, our information or our view here, index.html, which is located within our IP directory in our views. So let's just kind of check some of our assumptions um, now that we actually have this index action and make sure that this actually works. So we'll refresh the page just for sanity's sake and click my IP and cool, it works. So um, already have some CSS just to center this on the page and the information there is obvious. But what we want is to essentially grab the IP address of whoever's clicking that link and display it here. So when they come to this page, they're gonna get a different IP address. Um, and how we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna use the request. So whenever you click on a link, um, it sends a request and there's all sorts of things that are contained within the request. So actually um, there's, you know, there's the header, there's body, there's all sorts of information um, and when you're in Rails, um, if you look at some of the API docs, there's a lot of information that you can actually pull out of this. Um, one of those things being an IP address. You can also grab the remote IP, which is what we're gonna be using. So when uh, something comes through or when a request comes through, we're gonna actually save the IP address in an instance variable. So we'll just call it IP. And we're going to say, grab the uh, request and grab the remote IP off of that. And then we'll go into our view and we'll just set an, a, a tag right below what our IP address is and we'll set up our Ruby tag, our embedded Ruby here, and we'll just send back um, the instance variable there, which is gonna be a string for us. Um, and that's it. I mean, uh, there's not a whole lot going on here. Like I said, it's uh, been kind of a busy week, so we're not covering a whole heck of a lot. But I think what might be interesting actually is uh, to cover a couple of things. So. Right now, actually, if we refresh this page, we will get, in theory, quote unquote, our IP address is coming in as double colon one, uh, but that's because we're on local host. So if you actually go to the live version of production, which I've already pushed up, um, you can you can see that my IP address is actually coming through perfectly fine. Um, so if you're doing this too, yeah, you're gonna get colon colon one, but. I think what might be a little bit interesting just to add some context to this is to look at what um, what request actually is. So this is also a good kind of lesson in debugging. So let's throw in um, require and we'll put by bug up here and let's throw in a by bug here 
and we can take a look at what request actually is. So let's go back to our server. We'll refresh the page and we should actually get, yep, right down at the bottom, it says that it's waiting for localhost. So if you look down here, it says waiting on localhost. We can switch over to our terminal and cool, bybug is stopped in our controller's action of index. And now we have access inside of this environment to everything that's been called so far. So we should in theory have access to requests. So if we type request, what does request give us? A whole heck of a lot of information, just like the API docs said we would have. So let's look at some of this stuff that we have. I mean, there's a whole ton of information in here. Like, let's take a look. Um, like, let's see what the body is, for instance. So if we say request body, it's a string. Makes sense, right? Um, so when you're talking about sending and receiving information through HTTP, we already know, right, that we can only send and receive strings. Um, but there's also some other information in here. So what we're looking to grab is um, our remote IP. And again, in this situation, it's colon colon one, but in a live environment, you're gonna get, um, you're going to get that IP address of whatever server uh, is, is speaking to the application. Um, there's a lot of other information on here though. So, I mean, this is something that's really kind of interesting to explore. I mean, as the docs point out here, there's all sorts of things that you can check on. So like, this is a common thing that we see in Rails controllers where, especially if you're generating your controllers, you'll get this um, is request.xhr question mark. And I mean, in this case, we can say, well, let's call it, let's find out. Is it an XHR request? No, it's not. And is it XML HTTP request? Don't feel like typing that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy pasta that. And nope, no. So I think that this is kind of a cool instance where, yeah, we're building something really small, really quick this week. It's not you know, super engaging and, you know, flashy, like whiz bang CSS JavaScript. But this is really like the skeleton of the internet. I mean, or an application in general. I mean, this is how you're communicating with the outside world. So explore this, um, you know, look at all of the information that gets passed when you click on a link um, or when you are, are speaking with a server, there's a lot of stuff here. So I encourage you to definitely look into that, um, read up about what a request is and why it's important and all of the pieces inside of there. And as always, feel free to take any of the code that you see here. Um, it's all on GitHub and leave any questions. If I can't answer them, I can at least direct you towards resources that can. And yeah, keep coding guys.